All right, everyone, so uh, I did just see my clock tick over to one o'clock, which means we are going to go ahead uh, and get started with our show. Um, so so uh, uh, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the planetarium educators at the Liberty Science Center. Uh, very excited to be here with all of you today to talk about uh, what is the largest topic to humans. We're talking today all about the universe. So we're going to be taking a trip all the way from right here on the Earth out to the very, 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 very edge of the observable universe. So even though we can't exactly travel uh, uh, in the real world as much as we would like, we thankfully uh, can go wherever we want with our planetarium software. So we're going to go, well, pretty far away. Um, during the presentation, if you have any questions, uh, uh, please do uh, just write them uh, in the comments section. I'll be keeping my eyes uh, on the comments section uh, during the presentation, try to answer as many questions while it's going on uh, as I can. I'll also be hanging out at the end of the show to answer uh, a, a, a many, many more of your questions. We also do have my colleague, Mike, who is in the comments, uh, who will be typing out some, some answers to your questions as well. Uh, if you're also looking for something else to do later on uh, this evening, uh, tonight at 6 o'clock p.m., uh, we are hosting trivia right here at the Liberty Science Center's Facebook page. Uh, and the trivia tonight is going to be aimed, uh, is, is going to be kind of directed and aimed towards, uh, towards adults. We're doing another trivia tomorrow morning at 11.30 a.m., uh, which is going to be aimed, uh, uh, aimed more toward families and kids. So we do hope to see you joining us for some of our other uh, wonderful Facebook live streams. Um, but yeah, with all that, let's go ahead and get ourselves started talking today and giving a tour of the universe. So we're going to begin our uh, show today by looking out at the night sky. And this is what you could expect to see on a really, really dark night. If you find some place without any light pollution, no lights around you, this is what you could expect to see. And we can see so much stuff. Right? Lots of stars. We can see this big fuzzy band of light that goes across uh, that goes uh, that goes across the sky here. If you know the name of this fuzzy band of light, you can go ahead and let me know in the uh, uh, in the comment section uh, uh, what this what the name for this big fuzzy band of light is here. But with our eyes, we can see so much stuff. About five thousand stars. We can see planets. And we can, yes, indeed, see this big fuzzy band of light here, which is the Milky Way galaxy. But there is so much more to the universe than what we can see with our eyes. There is so much stuff out there. And to help keep track of it, we're going to make today what we're going to call our cosmic address. That's going to be our address in the universe. Kind of like our address right here on planet Earth. So this here is the, uh, is, is, uh, is the address of the Liberty Science Center, right? We've got the street Liberty Science Centers on, the city, the state, and the country. This is how we make an address on the Earth to, to, so we can know where individual buildings are and where we are. Today we're going to be doing something similar in the Earth's cosmic address. So making our cosmic address and figuring out where exactly we are located in space. So, of course, the first line of our cosmic address is right here on the Earth. And the Earth is a spectacular place. Of all the places we found in the universe, the Earth is the only one where we have found life. It's the perfect place for life to exist, inhabited by billions of humans. It's a really a spectacular place. And we learn more about the Earth every single day. We study the Earth so much, both from down on the Earth, but also from space. So to help us study planet Earth, humans use satellites. We put satellites up into orbit around the Earth. They travel around and can take pictures, take data to help us understand our planet a little bit better. This here is every satellite currently orbiting planet Earth. Every individual little green dot uh, that, that, that you see here is a satellite, represents a satellite. The lines are the orbits and the paths that these satellites take around the Earth. And today there are about 5,000 satellites orbiting the Earth. 
only about 2,000 of them today are active and actually taking and transmitting data, but every satellite that orbits the Earth has its own job, right? Some of them study things like forests or oceans or rivers, land, stuff like that. Other satellites, like these ones way out here, these satellites are about 25,000 miles away from the Earth. These satellites out here help our GPS systems work. The GPS on your phone communicates with satellites way out here. If you have a satellite TV at home, your satellite TV is connecting with satellites located about 25,000 miles away from the surface of the Earth. And we're launching more of these satellites every year. Hundreds of them every year, soon to be thousands every year. But some of the same ideas that we use to study the Earth as we speed up time very, very quickly here, some of the same ideas that we use to study our planet Earth, we also use to study the rest of the planets in the solar system. In fact, we have sent a robotic spacecraft to visit every planet in the solar system. And when we think of the solar system, that's what we usually think of, right? We think of the sun, we think of our eight planets, we maybe think of asteroids in the asteroid belt, or little chunks of ice and rock way out here in the Kuiper belt, which mark, which is kind of located outside of the orbits of Neptune uh, and located outside uh, of, of the orbits of Pluto. So we really are doing a great job of studying the solar system. But this here, what we're seeing, is not the entire solar system. Actually a whole lot bigger than just what we see here. It's a lot bigger than most of us usually think of when we think about the solar system. Now, in our journey, in our search to understand the solar system, we've launched a couple of, of, of robotic unmanned spacecraft marked by this green line and this purple line over here. These are the paths of the Voyager spacecraft. And those two spacecraft are the furthest objects that we've ever built from the Earth, right? So these spacecraft were launched back in uh, the late 1970s and have been traveling away from the Earth since then. They are today about 14 billion miles away from the Earth. These are the furthest human-made objects in space. But technically, they have not completely left the solar system yet. At least the way that we're going to define the solar system today. Because to leave the solar system, they need to also pass through all of this. This here is a big collection of comets, asteroids, chunks of ice and rock, called the Oort Cloud, all little objects that look a lot like this one right here. This is the Oort Cloud, and the Oort Cloud marks the edge of the solar system. This is the edge of it. Now, we define the Oort Cloud as the edge of the solar system because that marks the edge of where the sun's gravity has influence. If you go outside of the Oort Cloud, you've left the solar system which is the second line of our cosmic address. Earth is inside the solar system. Everything inside of the Oort cloud is a part of the solar system. And the Oort cloud is about two trillion, or about five trillion, excuse me, about five trillion miles away from the Earth. So traveling five trillion miles, we have just now left the solar system which is incredible to think about. That's such a big distance, right? That's one light year, five trillion miles. That's the distance light travels in one year. So the Oort cloud here is the very outer edge of the solar system, at least the way that we're going to define the solar system today, as the edge of where the sun's gravity has influence. The Oort cloud, which, uh, which is spelled O-O-R-T, is again, five trillion miles away from us. That is the edge of the solar system. But we're not just going to limit our journey today to the Oort cloud. No, 
we're going to keep on going. We're going to leave the solar system completely. And we're going to fly all the way out to the very, 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 very edge of our Milky Way galaxy. So the Milky Way is the name of the galaxy that we live in. And when we hear about a galaxy, that just means it's a big collection of stars and planets. And the Milky Way itself has about 200 billion stars in it. And the Milky Way makes the third line of our cosmic address. The Earth is a part of the solar system, and the solar system is a part of the Milky Way. Now, the Sun is just one star in the Milky Way galaxy. There's about 200 billion of them. The Earth is just one planet in the Milky Way. There's about 200 billion planets in the Milky Way, too. The Milky Way is huge. It, it is such a massive place. It's gigantic. We live right around here in this part of the Milky Way. We've got a, a, we, we had a little circle drawn up there earlier. That's where we are in the Milky Way. From out here, we can't even see the sun anymore. That's how far away we are. The whole Milky Way galaxy is about 100,000 light years across. That means traveling the speed of light, the fastest anything in the universe can travel, it would still take you 100,000 years to cross from one side of the Milky Way to the other. And uh, I want to pause here. I have seen a couple of questions so far uh, about how my cat Pants is doing. She's made a couple of guest appearances uh, in my previous stream. She's doing fine. Uh, she's currently uh, uh, enjoying a nap uh, in the window, enjoying the sunshine. Thanks for asking about my cat. I appreciate it. So I, right, this is such a mind-boggling amount of stuff just inside of the Milky Way, right? 200 billion stars right here. And for most of human history, we thought that the Milky Way was the only galaxy in the universe. Right? We thought for a long time that the Milky Way was all that there was. Um, today, we know that is not case. In the same way that the Earth is just one planet in our solar system, the Milky Way is just one galaxy in a group of galaxies that we call the local group. What we're seeing here is the local group of galaxies. The local group uh, is made up of about 50 different galaxies, and it makes up the next line of our cosmic address. Earth is a part of the solar system, the solar system is a part of the Milky Way, and the Milky Way is a part of the local group. The Milky Way is the largest object in, or is the second largest galaxy in the local group. 50 galaxies and dwarf galaxies that make it up. These are all galaxies that are pretty close together, relatively speaking, anyway. Now, the largest galaxy in the local group, our largest neighbor in space, is a galaxy called Andromeda. The Andromeda galaxy is the closest big galaxy to us in the universe. But this galaxy here, Andromeda, is still about two and a half million light years away. The closest galaxy to us is still two and a half million light years away. That means it takes light two and a half billion years to get here. It's pretty far. But it turns out that the Andromeda galaxy actually is getting closer to us. And closer and closer every single day. Eventually, the Andromeda galaxy is going to collide with the Milky Way, which sounds kind of scary, right? We think about two galaxies colliding, but it's not. This is what it's going to look like when these two galaxies collide. We've got uh, the Milky Way on the left, the Andromeda over on the right. Now, if the idea of these two galaxies colliding sounds kind of scary, right? I do want to 
kind of kind of get rid of those fears right this is not going to happen for another four billion years that's such a long time four billion years from now we don't need to worry about it it's so far away but even when it does happen it's going to be so slow that the earth and the sun will be totally unaffected by this so there's not any danger to the earth or to the sun this whole collision from start to finish is going to last about a billion years. This is going to be such a long process that the Earth won't be affected. The only thing that we'll notice differently is we'll have more stars around us in the sky. It's pretty cool. Eventually, though, when these two galaxies finish colliding in about six billion years from today, they'll combine into one much, much larger galaxy. So, we have so far seen so much stuff, right? And I know I'm throwing so many numbers at you today. Right? We're talking about this galaxy is over 2 million light years away. It's going to collide in 4 billion years from today. If you find all these numbers kind of overwhelming, that's okay, right? They're overwhelming to me because these numbers are so big, right? We're talking about so such big ideas, so many big things that there's a lot of numbers that we're going to be saying today. Um, so uh, if, if they sound really big numbers, they, that's because they are, right? These numbers are big because, uh, well, our universe is, is really, really big. Okay, so uh, a couple of questions that, that, that I have seen uh, come by so far. Uh, so, so what is a dwarf galaxy? That's a really good question. What is a dwarf galaxy? So kind of like how we have dwarf planets in the solar system, like Pluto, um, we have dwarf galaxies as well. A dwarf galaxy is something that is just too small to be its own galaxy, right? It's just kind of a very small version of a galaxy. That's all that we say when we mean a dwarf galaxy. And the Milky Way has a few dwarf galaxies that orbit around it, which is pretty cool. Now, now someone want, uh, now, now someone also uh, was asking uh, about how many galaxies we know of, right? And we're going to get there. It's a big number. It's a really, really big number. Um, but even just in our own little local group, our own closest neighbors in the universe, there's still about, there's still about 50 galaxies in just the closest part of the universe to us. So those are the closest galaxies, about 50 of them. But in the same way that the Milky Way is a part of the local group, a local group is also a part of a bigger collection of galaxies. And at this point, everything we see here, every single thing, every dot of light, everything we see here is a galaxy. We're looking at about 50,000 galaxies. And this is something that we call the Virgo supercluster. Right? The Virgo supercluster which makes the next part of our cosmic press. So the Earth is a part of the solar system, which is a part of the Milky Way, which is a part of the local group, and the local group is a part of the Virgo supercluster. So what is the Virgo supercluster, right? It sounds like, like, a, like a name out of a science fiction movie. It sounds like something you'd hear in Star Wars or Star Trek. The Virgo supercluster is just a really big group of galaxies made up of lots of individual groups, individual clusters like the local group. So the Virgo supercluster uh, is made up of about 100,000 galaxies. We can see right now about 50,000 of them. So, I'm going to actually stop us here for a moment. I want you to think about that for just a moment. 100,000 galaxies in this supercluster. Every one of these galaxies is home to its own group of stars. 
its own group of planets. Billions of them, billions of stars, billions of planets in each of these galaxies. We're starting to see just how much is out there in the universe. From where we are now in the universe, we can't really even see the Milky Way anymore. It's so incredible what we're looking at here. So much stuff, 100,000 galaxies, every one of them home to billions of stars and to billions of planets. We're starting to talk about some even bigger numbers, right? If you thought talking about millions of light, we're going to get into even bigger numbers that are even more mind-boggling in just a moment. So the Virgo supercluster is itself made up of lots of smaller clusters of galaxies. Some of them here, so we're going to take kind of a nice scenic flight through here to see more up close what a cluster of galaxies is really like. So when we say something is a galaxy cluster, we mean they are just a group of galaxies that are all relatively close to each other in space, that are all kind of being attracted by the same forces of gravity. So in kind of the same way that the planets of the solar system are all bound together by the gravity of the sun, all of the galaxies in this cluster are also all bound together by the same force of gravity. So what we're looking at here are all real pictures of these galaxies. These are all real pictures of these galaxies. We're going to just take a nice, uh, a nice slow scenic trip through uh, this part of this galaxy cluster. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. There is so much out there. And in the meantime, we're going to answer a couple of questions. So, uh, so Sarah wants to know, how do scientists know that it'll take 4 billion years for the Andromeda galaxy to collide with us? That's a really good question. So we know about how far away the Andromeda galaxy is from us, and we know about how fast it's moving towards us. So doing that, we can figure out roughly when it's going to get here, right? Kind of the same idea if you know you're driving 50 miles and you're driving at about 50 miles per hour, you know it'll take you about an hour to get to your destination. So by knowing how far away the Andromeda galaxy is and how fast it's moving, we can figure out it'll take about 4 billion years to get to us. Now, now, one really great question uh, that I've seen a few times. How do we know all of this, right? I said earlier that nothing that we've ever built has ever left the solar system, which is true. How do we know about all of this? Well, from the Earth, we can use telescopes to take pictures of all of these galaxies, right? We can use telescopes to take pictures of all of these galaxies. And so we know that they're there and we know where they are taking pictures of them. Okay, so this is the Virgo supercluster, right? We're flying away from it now. So the Virgo supercluster is made up of about 100,000 galaxies, right? Make up that whole Virgo supercluster. Now, I'm going to tell you something that is, uh, that is uh, even more mind-boggling than that. The Virgo supercluster is just one of about 10 million superclusters in the universe. So there are about 10 million clusters of galaxies just like the one that we just saw. And those together make up the entire observable universe. We're going to travel now all the way, all the way outside of the Virgo supercluster, all the way to the very edge of the universe. At this point, every single little purple dot that you see right here, every one of these purple dots is its own galaxy, right? Every purple dot you see here is its own galaxy, 
that we have found with our telescopes. So this is a lot of stuff, right? Every purple dot you see here is its own galaxy, its own group of billions of stars and billions of planets. There is so much out there. And in fact, this right here, every single thing that humans have ever seen. This is everything that humans have ever seen, which is incredible to think about. So this is a lot of stuff, right? These are all galaxies. Now, from this picture, it kind of looks like the universe is shaped like a big hourglass. Right, that's kind of what this looks like. It's shaped like a big hourglass. So we're not seeing any galaxies here or any galaxies over here. Now, there are galaxies here. There is stuff here, right? There is stuff here. We just haven't seen it yet, right? If you remember when we were on the Earth, we were looking at that band of light going across the sky that made up the Milky Way. The Milky Way is so bright that we can't actually see through it out into the rest of the universe, right? We can't see this far away. We can't look through the Milky Way. It's kind of like sticking your head inside of a tire and trying to look out through the tire. You can't really do it. So there are galaxies here. We just haven't found them yet because we can't look through the Milky Way. So there is stuff out here. Well, we are looking at, again, everything that humans have ever seen. This is the whole universe. But there is one more thing that I'm going to show you here that is the literal furthest that we will ever be able to see. We've drawn up here now all this blue and green and yellow and orange kind of splotchy stuff. This is, a, this, is, this is something called the cosmic microwave background. The cosmic microwave background. So what is that? And that's a very funny sounding phrase, the cosmic microwave background. So the cosmic microwave background is a little bit of heat, a little bit of energy, just a couple degrees above absolute zero, just a little bit of energy left over from the beginning of the universe. So the universe began about 13.9 billion years ago, 13.9 billion years ago. Back then, the universe was really hot, and we still see a little bit of heat from that beginning of the universe, from what we interpret as the Big Bang. And that makes up this cosmic microwave background. We can't see this with our eyes, but with special telescopes, we can. And the cosmic microwave background, everything inside of it here, makes up the final line of our cosmic address, the observable universe. So the final line of our cosmic address is the observable universe. That is the last line of our address in space. Now, what does that mean, observable universe? What is that? The observable universe is everything that we can ever hope to see. I mentioned earlier that the universe is about 13.9 billion years old. And we see these galaxies out here, far away from us, we're right here. We see these galaxies out here because light takes time to travel from there to us. So the whole universe, it takes light from out here, we'll say 10 billion years to get to us. Light from out here takes us maybe 12 billion years to get to us. Light out here takes maybe 13 billion years to get to us. Well, there are things further away. But it would take light 14, 15, 16 billion years for that light to get to us, right? It would take 14, 15, 16 billion years for that light to get to us. 
Well, the universe is only 13.9 billion years old. That means light doesn't have time to travel any further than the cosmic microwave background. There is stuff out there. We'll just never be able to see it because the universe is only 13.9 billion years old. So we've now looked at literally everything in the observable universe that we've found so far. This is everything that humans have ever seen, ever found. And we'll never be able to see past this, unfortunately. So there's a lot of stuff out there. In the universe, there's about, in the observable universe, there's about two trillion galaxies. Two trillion galaxies. There's about two trillion galaxies in the universe. That's such a big number. There's even more outside of the observable universe. Two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. One of them is the Milky Way. So, yeah, the universe is really big. If you want an exact number for how big the universe is, the universe is about 96 billion light years across. The observable universe is about 96 billion light years across. So, it's big. It's big. Now, I have been throwing so many numbers out at you today, right? And it's hard to think of numbers that big, right? We can't, I, I know I can't, maybe, maybe, maybe you all can, but I can't really conceive of 2 trillion galaxies, 96 billion light years. The universe is big, right? That's, it is unfathom, unfathomably big. But we're not going to spend all of our time out there. We're going to reverse our journey here and fly all the way back home through the Virgo supercluster, through the local group, through the Milky Way, all the way back in to the solar system, and we'll land on planet Earth. So the universe is huge. The universe is so big. And if seeing all of that makes you feel a little bit kind of small, right? I I think I I think that makes sense if that makes you feel kind of small. Is incredible is that we have found all of that stuff, all that stuff in the Milky all in the observable universe in the last hundred years. Us humans working together from right here on the earth have found all of that stuff in just the last one hundred years. Humans are incredible. Right? Each and every one of us can accomplish so many great things. So we're always learning more. Right? When we work together to understand the universe better, we can do some pretty wonderful things. Now, we are back here on the Earth, and we're going to land ourselves right back where we left from, right, from, uh, right outside of the Liberty Science Center. And in doing that now, I have successfully took us, I've successfully taken us, to the edge of the universe, being everything humans have ever seen and made it all the way back to the Earth and safe. That does mean now that we are pretty much at the end of our show. Now, I am going to be sticking around for, uh, for at least another 10 or 15 minutes to answer some more of your questions. I know you all have a lot of questions. We'll try to get to as many of them as we can. Um... But in the meantime, uh, uh, before we get to all uh, to get all of your questions, I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. We've been doing these uh, planetarium live streams uh, for the past about month and a half, um, and I've loved doing them. I've loved talking with all of you about the things that I love to talk about, about space and planets and the universe and black holes and exoplanets. And really my goal in doing this and Liberty Science Center's goal is to inspire the next generation of scientists, engineers, astronomers to go on and help us understand the world even more. So to anyone watching this today thinking that you want to be an astronomer or an astronaut, an engineer, a doctor, a physicist, uh, it's our job and it's what we love to do to encourage you all to do that. 
So, so those of you watching who are going to become these, these, these scientists represent a great future for all of us. Now, Liberty Science Center, uh, as a nonprofit, especially in the times we're living in today, uh, we do rely on, on donations uh, to help us continue to do these planetarium live streams and all of our other STEM programs. So I just want to take a moment to thank all of our members and, and anyone who has donated to help us continue to work through our mission to inspire the next generation of, uh, of scientists and engineers. Uh, if you are able to, we do appreciate any support. Uh, you can do that by, by visiting uh, lsc.org slash donate. Uh, we do appreciate everyone who, who, who continues to watch, watch our live streams um, and uh, any support that, uh, that, that we get. So I love doing these. And now we're going to spend some time answering all of the questions that you all might have. Yes, I'm sure there are so many questions out there. There are so many questions. Uh, we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. Okay, um, so this is a really, really great question. Uh, so, uh, uh, Niha wants to know, can we in the future find areas outside of the observable universe? Um, and the answer, unfortunately, that question is no. Um, because space itself is continuing to expand. Right? Space itself continues to get bigger. And so even though more time has gone by, it's taking longer for that light to get to us because space is getting bigger. So unfortunately, we'll never be able to see anything outside of that observable universe because space itself keeps getting bigger, which is its own kind of mind-bending topic. To think about. Okay, um, so uh, so Matthew in first grade wants to know uh, if I can show us what it was like before the universe was ever here. That's a really really great question, um, and uh, we can't really do that uh, at least not with a real picture, right? Because we can't see back that far. We can't see far enough back to when to to like before there was the universe that we see today we can't see back that um but we have an idea is what it would look like imagine the entire universe right everything that we just saw all those galaxies stars planets all crushed together into a single point in space it would be unfathomably hot hotter than any place in the universe right now and so incredibly bright brighter than any star we see in the skies. It would be blindingly bright and incredibly hot. We wouldn't be able to really see much because it'd just be too bright. So that's what the universe would have been like right as it was being born or right before it was kind of created in this, or, uh, or, or right before the Big Bang happened, which kind of created the universe that we see today. Let's see. Oh, so how old how, so I'm seeing this question about how old things like the Earth, the universe, Milky Way are. So uh, let me answer a lot of those kind of how old are these things questions, because those are all really good ones. So as far as we know, as far as science uh, can tell us right now, the Earth is about four and a half billion years old. The Milky Way is about 12 billion years old. The universe itself is about 13.9 billion years old. So it's all really old. It's all really, really old, billions and billions of years old. Now, I have seen uh, also during my presentation today questions about whether or not life or us could live on one of these, in one of these galaxies that we saw, right? So right now, um, we have not found another place that life can exist on other than the Earth. Right? We haven't found any of that yet. Um, but it's certainly possible, right? There are so many stars and so many planets out there in the universe, there's a good chance that there is a planet out there that life can live on or that we could live on someday. We just haven't found it yet. And we haven't found any, any life out there yet. 
are continuing to look, right? That's, that's, that's one of the big questions that we want to answer. Is there life and can there be life anywhere other than planet Earth? So, so as of right now, um, I see this question uh, from Ruth asking, can we breathe on other planets? So right now, that's a really good question. Right now, we cannot breathe on any other planets. Uh, we can only breathe on the Earth, uh, at least not without wearing something like a spacesuit, right? Because no other planets that we've found have the same gases that we humans need to survive. We haven't found another planet with a lot of oxygen in its atmosphere. So the Earth is the only planet we've found so far that humans can breathe on without a spacesuit. With a spacesuit, we can breathe on Mars, we can breathe on the Moon, we can breathe on, uh, can breathe on Venus with a spacesuit. But without a spacesuit, really only the Earth. Um, oh, that's such a, so, uh, so I saw a really good question from, from, from Hayden. Can we ever create something that travels at the speed of light? Um, technically, yes, we could in the future, right? Um, not quite at the speed of light. We, we could, in theory, get really close to it. Um, but it would take a lot of energy. It would take so much energy to get something moving that quickly. Um, so physically it's possible, but practically it's really difficult. Humans will probably never be able to make something travel that fast because it takes so much energy to get something moving at anywhere near the speed of light. But in the future, who knows, right? Who knows if what we're going to discover in the future, we could maybe find something that would let us travel post the speed of light. So it's technically possible, but very difficult to do. Uh, let's see, so we've got a question about whether or not there are multiple black holes. That's a really, really good question. So yeah, there are a lot of black holes in the universe. Um, a few weeks ago, we did a show talking all about black holes. Uh, so if you want to know more about black holes, uh, uh, we, we, we did a show uh, that talked only about black holes uh, about a month ago now. So you can check out our uh, Facebook page and, and hopefully find where that video is. But there are lots of black holes. Um, and in fact, every single galaxy, right, we'll take a look back here at uh, our galaxy cluster, every big galaxy in the universe has, a, has black holes inside of it, even the Milky Way, right? So there are literally trillions of black holes in the universe. They're not dangerous to us at all, but they are out there. There's trillions of black holes in the universe. Because every big galaxy has one at its center. That's a really, really great question. Let's see. So Davis wants to know, how do you go to, to outer space? How do you go to outer space? That's a really, really great question. And it's something I spend a lot of time thinking about, about going to outer space, right? So for us to get into space, we need to, first of all, put on a really big spacesuit to protect us, to keep us safe, to make sure we have things like air to breathe and water to drink. At that point, we need to hop inside of a rocket. Once we're in that rocket, that rocket takes off and sends us into space. It's very hard to do, but we've done it, right? We've sent people, we've sent people to visit the moon. There's currently people right now, as we're talking, orbiting the Earth in space. And, 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 and Davis, hopefully someday you are one of those people. If, if, you, if, if you decide that you want to, hopefully you're one of those people who can travel out into space. Be a really cool thing to do. Something I spent a lot of time wondering and thinking about. Let's see. So what... Ah, so really great question uh, from Ali. Uh, so when we collide with the other galaxy, with the Andromeda galaxy, um, will the constellations we see in the sky change? And, and yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We're going to have so many new stars close to us that the constellations are going to be totally different, right? They're going to be totally different. We'll have a whole new group of stars to look at in about 4 billion years. Pretty long from now, but but yeah, there, there will be totally new constellations, 
lots of stars that we've never really seen before close to us. Let's Ah, so uh, Christina is asking about a Dyson sphere. Really, really great question. So speaking of energy, what about something like a Dyson sphere? Um, so that's a really good question. So any, anyone who doesn't know what a Dyson sphere is, um, it's, it's, it's a really cool idea about putting essentially like really big like solar panels uh, in space to capture all of the light coming from the sun, right? So in theory, something like that could provide a ton of energy. It could provide so much energy. Um, so maybe something like a Dyson sphere could give us enough energy to maybe travel in, uh, to travel in, to, to travel faster than, or to travel almost as fast as the speed of light someday. So maybe something like a Dyson sphere could help us with that. But those are uh, still just an idea that we have, something that is going to take a very, very long time for us to be able to uh, to build. Okay, so Sylvia asks a really good question. What percent of a chance is there for us to find other life in the universe someday? And that's a really good question. So right now, we think the chance of finding life somewhere is pretty small. Right? We think it's very, very small. Because the universe is so big, right? Even the closest stars to us are still several light years away. And we don't think any of those planets have life on them. So the distances in the universe are just so big that even something like a radio signal or a transmission would take hundreds, thousands, or millions of years to get to us. So there's a very, 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 I don't want to say impossible, but a very, very small chance that, we're, that we do find life somewhere else in the universe. Um, if it's out there, it's a different question. But if it's out there, finding it is going to be very, very difficult. So, uh, so, so thank you all. Uh, thank you, for, uh, everyone, for your questions. We'll give just about a couple, we have time for just a couple more questions. Um, so, Tepper, just a couple more questions here um, before we do run out of time. Ah, so we've got another question about our galaxy collision. So, so when two galaxies collide, um, can it create new planets? Um, so, when two galaxies collide, um, we think it can lead to new stars and new planets forming. So. Um, so our best idea is that, yeah, galaxies colliding can create new planets. Um, we don't know that for sure, though, but that's our best idea, is that galaxies colliding can kind of churn up the gas and the dust inside of these galaxies, bring them together, and can help to form more planets in the future. Ah, okay. So, uh, so this is going to be our final question from uh from uh melissa how many planets are there and this is one of my favorite questions to answer how many planets are there so there's two ways to answer that question so just in our solar system let me pull up uh the that picture of, of that inner part of the solar system here so in our solar system, there are about eight, well, there are exactly eight planets in our solar system. Okay, so that's our solar system. At least that we found so far. Maybe we'll find another one. So for now, we'll say eight in the, in the solar system. Okay. Then looking further out, we think in just the Milky Way, just in the rest of the Milky Way on its own, we think that there are about 200 billion planets just in our Milky Way galaxy. And then we look at all the other galaxies, and we think each of the other galaxies has billions of planets in them as well. So there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trillions of planets in the universe. 
Only eight of them are in the solar system, but there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trillions of planets in the universe. There is so much stuff out there, and we keep on learning more about it. It's so cool, and uh, as you can probably tell, talking about the universe is one of my favorite things to talk about. So I do want to thank all of you for spending a little bit of your afternoon uh, uh, here today uh, joining us to talk all about the universe. Um, we'll be back here next week, uh, next Thursday at, uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, my colleague Mike will be here with you talking all about five planets in the solar system that you can see with your eyes. So, uh, so that'll be right back here next Thursday at 1 o'clock p.m. My friend Mike will be talking all about five planets that we can see with our eyes uh, uh, right here in the solar system. But with all that out of the way, I do want to thank you all so much once again for joining me today. Have a fantastic rest, uh, rest of your afternoon uh, and a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you all so much.